Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Dyson Sphere Program. It's Sunday and that means it's time for another update. So the big thing I've got start started in the last stream was starting to launch the rockets that will put together my actual Dyson Sphere. And here's the, uh, the silo getting ready to launch one. Let's try and get a good camera angle on it. The uh, rocket rising up into it and whoosh! That fires the rocket out, which sends it off into space, which is an angle I can't I can't see from see from here. But if I switch over to the Dyson Swarm view, you can see it coming in from over here and flying over to join on to one of my one of the points I've selected, which I've decided decided will be my the the, the starting points for my Dyson the, the frame of the initial Dyson sphere. Or the initial frame of the Dyson Sphere, rather. So the uh, the way this works, I, I think I've sort of got my head around it now, um, is that you you plan out the points you want to put your Dyson Sphere on by going well on here. My Dyson Sphere layer, I've got a layer, and you can go in here and you can choose the points where you want to select them. So we, as you can see, we've got these sort of greenish blue line around the middle, the sort of the the shading, not the not the line that keeps flashing, and that's the area that I can currently build in. Um, as I do more research, I will start to be able to build at higher latitudes as well. But currently, I can only build all the way around here. So, I've put in all of these these green splodges like this. These are essentially anchor points for the frames. And they are currently as, that's as, far, as far apart as the game will let you put them. So, I'm making the, uh, making the, um, the frames as, as, as widely spread as possible. Um, which, for now, seems like a good idea. But later on, uh, from what I've read, may or may not be. So the, uh, the rockets will keep coming in like this and they'll gradually start building up these nodes and each node when I select it it tells me over here that um, I've planned 210 um, structure points for this for this particular node and um, there's currently none on their way but 18 have been constructed if I select this one we can see this one's again 210 and only 8 have been constructed so it looks like I'm going to have to launch a huge number of rockets because it looks like each rocket is one structure point each one of these requires 210 and there's one two three four five so there's, there's 12 of them here so we're going to, we're going to require an absolute we're going to require about two and a half thousand uh, rocket launches in order to get all of these up um, and so far well they're they're flying out fairly slowly as you can see we've got this one's at eight and that's about to go over to nine i assume as the as the rocket docks with it uh, yeah there we go nine uh, so there's a long way to go yet before this is going to actually start to become remotely useful i gather that once you've got um once you've got a dyson uh, once you've got a ring going all the way around you can't actually do anything particularly useful with it i think it might generate a little bit of power i have to admit i'm not i'm not quite sure but at some point in the future um, once I've done the research to allow me to build up to this latitude line, um, I'm going to be able to build frames. I'm going to be able to put outline uh, nodes in the in the all four corners and, and down here as well, and make much much bigger squares. And at that point, we can then start to fill in all the space in the middle with Dyson sails. So that's that's the um, these things that I've been launching for ages to put into my Dyson swarm. The difference here is that once they've been put into the Dyson sphere, they won't degrade over time and eventually fall out of the sky. They'll just sit there forever and continue always providing power although i did see something saying they provide less power when they're part of a dyson switch sphere but they last for longer so overall it's it's very very worthwhile the other very notable thing here is that i, I don't seem to be building the uh, launching solar cells as fast as i was before so i'm going to need to go in and boost that production and i think a large part of that is because i've started taking some of the um the solar no not, not, not that there that's, that, that is actual solar sails some of the, I, I think that might be because some of the um, bits and pieces I'm making over here to make the, make the solar sails, um, which are being shipped out by by rockets, sorry, by by delivery, uh, whatever they're called, um, to the other planet. Some of them are, I suspect, being well. Some of them are definitely being taken over here to be built into the solar sails to put into the rockets to, to assemble the Dyson swarm, uh, Dyson sphere. Sorry. So that's potentially why there's fewer going into the swarm. However, I thought I had a plentiful supply of them, and I'm trying to remember what the other thing is that goes into a Dyson sail. So if I have a look over here in this one, oh, it's also the uh, the bucky sheets. So does that mean there's insufficient bucky sheets going into the uh, the launch system? Over Let's have a look. So you're taking no, you've got you've got loads of everything. I don't I don't know why that's gone down. I'm going to have to go over over to the other planet and have a look. So we'll we'll do that in a little while. Um, once I've got once I finish talking about the air, what I'm doing over here. So yes, in order to make that, I had this. Uh, I decided to cobble this in here. Just as, at the moment, this is a proof of concept. As you can see, it's not exactly launching rockets particularly quickly, um, but it's it is launching them, and so that that tells me that what I'm doing here is working, and therefore I need to then go off and do it on a much much larger scale somewhere else, possibly on another planet. 
but what I need in order to get this working nicely is to build up the um, these frame materials these are the, the frames that are used to build the actual Dyson sphere and um, that's, that's the bucky tubes titanium uh, titanium alloy and silicon sure and then we can make those into these things Dyson sphere components along with some um, solar sails and some processors um, and that allows me to build up something that the, the actual part that gets put into the Dyson, uh, Dyson Swarm. So in order to do that I'm making the sails here, they're being direct inserted across here and then the parts are coming down this way to go into here to be made into rockets where we also require this fuel that's deuterium and uh, supermagnetic rings and more titanium alloy and that we seem to have coming through in a reasonable quantity to the extent that what, what's the shortage what's the, the problem here the, okay so the, the limiting the limit on the on, on the supply of these is these things um, at the moment although I notice that there aren't a huge number of these coming through either so if I start to um, if I start to make these faster then we'll run it very quickly run out of these and these don't actually appear to be being produced which is a bit of a problem um, I'm going to need to look into that but that's uh, they can just go, whoa, they come from all the way around here. This is a horrible, horrible spaghetti tangle. So they come from all of these machines, which have run out of um, electromagnetic turbine. Okay, so so there are there are basically there are problems going back and back and back up the up the system, and I'm going to need to sort all of those out in order to get this running much faster. However, I'm probably not going to bother because I think it would be better to go off and build all of this and all of the bits that go into them, probably somewhere else and potentially even on another planet maybe on the other planet where I'm doing all of the uh, titanium and silicon and everything else mining um, because that already has the solar sails on there I don't know I'll have a think about that but at the moment we are we are gradually launching rockets it's nice as a proof of concept but we're going to need to launch them a lot faster than this if I'm ever going to get a sensible um, Dyson swarm up and run Dyson sphere up and running um, looking up there, I can't see any. I can't see any useful parts of the Dyson sphere up there. So I think I need to make it quite a lot bigger before it comes visible. So that's the, that's the first thing, though. So I think I've got to a good point with this. It is it is launching the um, the Dyson sphere components, but there's a lot more to do on that to, in order to get it working fast enough and and reliably enough. And as I said, I think I'm going to need to head out and, and get a lot more solar cells being launched because we seem to have a bit a big shortage of them. In the last in the last video, I talked about how purple science wasn't being produced fast enough, and as you can see, it's still a bit pathetic over here. Um, and this is because we're getting an occasional spray of processes out like this, and then when as they come along here, they're, we're then quickly making a burst of purple science. And as you can see, all these machines are firing up, getting really excited, and then all the processes have gone. So the whole thing sort of collapses down a bit and, and nothing really happens. Now we are filling up quite nicely with these, uh, with the purple science, because we're not doing any of it at the moment. Because I think most of the science I care about has already been done. However, it's still a bit of a concern that at the moment we're not producing these fast enough. And so I came over here, um, where was it? Yes, here, looking, looking to see what the problem was. Um, and it turned out way back then, at the, at the beginning of the last stream, it was because there was no copper. So I've gone out, I've made some more copper mines, and I've made some more coal mines as well, because we're short of that. But now looking here, it doesn't look like the um, there's, there's actually a problem with the uh, with the copper. There's plenty of copper flowing through here. There's plenty of um, uh, silicon coming through, and so we've got lots of the um, lots of the electronic components, and there's a plentiful supply of the um, normal uh, of the green circuits coming through. So we're just a bit short. Basically, this this looks like we're short on production. So I think, given that this system requires uh, silicon and copper, and let me check what else is required for green circuits. Probably going to be iron, I would imagine. Um, yeah, iron, iron and more copper. I think this would be worth moving off onto a different planet. And if we look out here in space, a leaf of four has massive quantities of copper, quite a lot of iron, and at least a bit of silicon. So I think the best way to produce these processors would be to go out to a leaf of four and produce a massive processor production plant on that planet that's just going to churn them out at a huge, huge rate. Now, nowhere else seems to have quite the same level of um, iron as... Um, as Norvis did. Um, Norvis? There we go. That one. No. Still not. No. This one. There's a planet here. There we go. Okay, actually, we've used up quite a lot of the iron. So, actually, so actually, yes, it looks like going out here, where there's crazy, crazy amounts of copper, lots of iron, and at least some silicon. And we can always ship the silicon from um, over here on, on Titan if we want to. Uh, out to here. Um, I think that's probably going to be the way to go. And then we'll have all, we'll have all of the ingredients out. We can just, and then we can just ship massive quantities of processors out from here to to wherever else they're needed around the solar system. So I think that's going to be the, that's going to be the way to solve this problem. Um, it's just going to be 
a fairly major undertaking and then I can consider potentially removing this plant down here. Oh, I am going to need to ship paint over there as well because there's not... Oh, that's, I could produce... Uh, no, wrong one. I could produce the paint out on a leaf of four because there is there is a bit of coal, but it's only 126,000, and I don't think that's going to last very long. So I think I probably won't do that. I'll, I'll, I'll either just go, I don't care about the paint, painting them because there's so much uh, copper and silicon and iron available out here, or I'll, or I'll ship the paint out there from um, from Norvis. I have, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't decided which yet. We shall see. So that's that's that. The next thing I thought about was starting to make the green science. So there's there's quite a lot of steps in here. Um, we're going to need to make these um, graviton lenses, out of, uh, and we're going to need and we need to make the quantum chips. So I believe I set up a quantum chip production facility, but I can't remember where I did that because this plan. It's harder to remember. I've noticed it's much much harder to remember and work out where things are on a three dimensional planet. Or on a spherical planet, oh there they are, than it is on in on in the 2D world of Factorio. Because in Factorio, you just remember that it's sort of up there, over a bit to the left of that thing. But in on this one, because everything's on a sphere, it's much harder to sort of to get that same sort of feel for where everything is. But over here, what have I done? Well, I decided I, this this is my production facility that's going to be making the blue what what I'm going to call blue to blue circuits for now, because well, because that's basically what they are. That, but that has a lot of different input ingredients. A lot of different input ingredients, as you can tell by the fact that we've got one, two, three, four, five different chains of assembly systems over here. So this is over, through this we are producing large quantities of glass from stone, so we're smelting that up. Then we're producing the titanium glass, which is glass and titanium, clues in the name there. Um, and then over here we're turning them into these pink crystal things, which are called Casimir crystals. Um, that that's actually no that's that's completely separate that's that's then produced pull, pulling in various other things like uh, titanium crystals which are expensive to make but they were being made by in one of the science areas so i've just tapped off from there and as you can see by the fact that we've got an absolutely full storage system here it's producing them at quite a, a lot of rate much faster than they actually needed them i think that might have been yellow science we'll go and have a look at that in a minute and see how it's getting on but that's enabled me to produce that, and all. Of, uh, but unfortunately, at a rather slow speed, um, and this is limited by apparently the speed that you deuterium is coming in at. I'm somewhat surprised I'm that short of deuterium. So that's a, um, a concern, and that's something I'm going to have to have a good think about because I don't. Yeah, I don't really want to run out of things like this. So yes, that's why we're not producing as many of these as I hoped, and therefore not producing as many um, plane filters, and therefore not as many quantum circuits. Uh, so yes, this is a bit slow. However, nothing is actually using these yet, so it's not a serious problem. Uh, at the moment, these are being made up for green science, and they're probably going to be needed for a few other things as well. But at the moment, I haven't started making the green science yet because there's so many other things that I've been playing around with, namely the Dyson Sphere production. So so far, it's just been a case of well, I'll I'll get these up and built because I'm going to need them later, but I won't worry too much about getting a, a steady flow of them through. This works. the uh, The whole factory system around here works in a very, very, very much the standard way. There's so many inputs. I've needed two towers, but they basically bring in all of the um, all of the ingredients that are required around here. They go out onto belts, like as you can see. They go through uh, paint booths, which spray them with the accelerator. So as you can see, there's no 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 arrows on them going in here. There are arrows on them coming out here, and that means we can put them into here. And then everything is painted, so that means we get the 20% boost out of this. And if it wasn't for that, we'd be getting, we'd be having even fewer of these uh, these quantum chips coming out the other side. So this seems to all be working reasonably well. As I say, there seems to be a shortage of deuterium, um, and that's being made somewhere on this planet. It was in the in the new oil processing facility that I put together. This planet is upside down, and therefore I'm very confused. Which I think was here. Yes, this one. So the idea is over here we are producing. This is this is my was my secondary oil production facility. So we're we're churning out massive quantities. We're doing the um, the processing of presumably crude oil. Yes, we're process and we're processing that down into um, into hydrogen and uh, refined oil as is traditional. And then over here, all of the excess we're turning some of the, I think we're turning some of the yes we're turning some of the excess hydrogen into more refined oil, and then we're turning the rest of the excess hydrogen into into deuterium. And that's quite a gradual process because each time the um, the deuterium flows through one of these machines, there's a relatively small sorry no the hydrogen flows through one of these fractionating columns. There's a relatively small chance that it'll be turned into deuterium, which is then fed off down the overflow belt into into here. 
where we've got loads of it actually so i don't know why that's being so slow it's probably because we haven't, I haven't put enough um logistics vessels in that so we'll go back and check that in a moment then yeah so that's that's filling up nicely and over here you can see the hydrogen that isn't used up flows around and get back around again and just keeps going round and round and round until it finally gets turned into deuterium so let's have a look at this um is that because you are you the de deuterium no you're not deuterium summoning you are asking for deuterium and No, there's 360 on its way over here from somewhere. Oh, no, that's hydrogen. I'm confused. Okay, so there's a... Sh no, this, so this is, this is using hydrogen, but there's a shortage of hydrogen. Right, there we go. Okay, so clearly I shouldn't be turning all of that deuterium into hydrogen. It, it's a bit of a problem. In, one of the problems I have in Dyson Sphere Program is there doesn't seem to be a nice, simple way of prioritising things or telling, telling things to work until they've got certain amounts of stuff available. Now, you can to an extent. So I could have my, my, my oil smelting areas, I could tell them to load up the, um, the, uh, the tower until it's absolutely full of hydrogen and then use any overflow hydrogen for making... Um, making making deuterium but there's this three-way balance between the refined refined oil the hydrogen and the deuterium all of which you can sort of swap between them to an extent so refined oil and hydrogen can be turned back and forth into each other um, either producing extra carbon or taking in carbon either one way around or the other um, so that uh, and then also the hydrogen can then be turned into deuterium so getting the balance between all three of them is rather tricky and I'm gonna have to have a good think about that try and come up with some sort of cunning system that ensures I've always got plenty of all of them because at the moment it seems like I don't because suddenly I've started requiring a lot more hydrogen over here and I think that's the problem so before originally I required hydrogen for I want to say red science yes that requires hydrogen then I required oil in huge quantities for yellow science um, blue purple science didn't seem to affect that too much but now for green science to make these processes suddenly I'm requiring loads and loads of hydrogen again so that's a bit of a thrown the whole th thrown the system off that I built before because I, I sort of prioritized it the wrong way around so I need to come up with something that's intelligent enough that has that it has um, positive or ha ha has proper feedback in the system so rather than just going yeah we'll make lots and lots of refined oil because we need more of that and if there's an overflow then sure who cares we'll just keep the keep the hydrogen that comes from the overflow um, instead I need to go well we're making you need loads of refined oil and we need loads of hydrogen so let's make loads of both of those and then try somehow to deal with the overflow from that so that makes this a bit more complicated um, I'm gonna have to go out and rethink and redesign how all these systems work but hopefully I'll, that that won't be I've got some ideas of how to do that but it's not going to be quite it's not quite as nice as it is in Factorio where you can just use circuit conditions to turn pumps on and off or to turn belts on and off in this case I'm going to have to wait till something happens I'm going to have to use fill the these these uh, splitter things and use the prioritization on them so if you, if you have um, if you have two belts coming out if you have two belts coming out of it like this then you can choose which of them to prioritize and so I could prioritize the one that goes straight into the tower and then when the tower's full it'll come out the other side and go through the overflow and be turned into one of the other products that we require so yeah this is going to be a bit a bit of a faff but hopefully I should be able to come up with some reasonably sensible way to get that working the other thing I've had to work on recently is the paint supply, and this is for the for the uh, productivity boosting that we that, that I've been doing. And so, in order to get that working, I've, I've I've come over here, and this is now I've now expanded my paint production system over here. So before we had just this half of it, I've now double roughly doubled it by putting in. This isn't exactly the same design as you can tell by looking at it, but over here I've got I'm painting the paint components as well. So over over here we I was using direct insertion because because I was being lazy. Over here I've done the sort of the, the standard um, multiple lines of, of products going in, and that means I can do the I can do the uh, the efficiency the, sorry the productivity boosts all all over here, and that means I get significantly more product out than I would if I if I wasn't doing that for the same amount of coal going in. I'm even painting the paint as it comes out here just for completeness, partly because it then gets I get a bit more out of it as it goes around here to power everything, but also when it goes into the tower it then doesn't need to be repainted at the other end. So yeah we've got this is now completely full we've got loads of coal available this is all working very nicely um so i think i have for right now i believe all of my raw ingredient shortages are solved it's just it's just the process stuff like the hydrogen and the possibly the refined oil and then and the and the circuits and things where, where i'm having issues and i don't know where i'm going oh yes over here for the yellow so i was going to see if the if i've got the same sort of thing over here 
Um, yeah, again, most of these are basically full. There's, there's some being brought in, but essentially the bars are all full over here. We've got lots and lots of everything. There's not a huge amount of paint stored here. Let's have a little bit more than that because 400 doesn't seem like all that much. Let's increase that to about 900. That's fine. So because I'm not doing any research at the moment, the, all of these systems have gone to sleep and that's probably why I seem to have plenty of supply of everything at the moment. Um, but I am going to need to start doing a lot of uh, boosting of my um, Dyson, Dyson Sphere. So the Dyson Sphere stress system here, this is, unfortunately this requires green science. So until I've got that, I can't expand my Dyson Sphere properly in order to have the, uh, in order to have the big grid of, um, of, so of solar sails on, on it. At the moment I'm just having to work, up, work on putting out a, just a, a steady lot, single string of it. Um, I could also do the planetary ionosphere utilization, but that again is a green circuit, requ uh, green science requ uh, requiring one. Uh, plane filter smelting. I, I don't even know what this would do. Um, okay, you can get better ore smelting apparently. Sure. Um, so that's a possibility. There's also always lots and lots of upgrades I can go for as well, so I could I could look into further exploring the universe. Um, that sounds quite nice actually, being able to see the uh, vein reserves on, on distant planetary systems. Um, that's green. A lot of these now have got to the point where they all require green science for the actual interesting things, so, which is why I haven't um, haven't upgraded any of these. But so, I've done most of what I can. I've not bothered with the research speed because so far it's been quick enough to be honest. Um, but the the rest of it, um, I think, yeah, most of the rest of the things that are remotely interesting, um, pretty much now require green science. So I can't I can't do those yet. I'll need to get that up and running, and that's going to require quite a lot more stuff, as I said. So yes, that's the um, that's where we've got to so far. I've solved most of the raw resource problems. I've started launching rockets for the Dyson Sphere, but there's um, I can't really do that properly without without starting to do some green research. The solar sails are working reasonably well. We're producing at least a bit of power from those. It looks like the, with the um, it looks like I seem to be producing the uh, the, the solar sails at the um, the previous rate again now. So they are they are launching about as quickly as they were before. So I'm not quite sure what caused these dips, but whatever it was, I seem to have got past that problem. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. I am rather concerned about the satisfaction level here. We are very very short of short of well satisfaction in the. Um, in the in the in the uh, from the Dyson swarm. However, let's let's have a look at the actual power production and, and consumption down here on the planet. Um, this still seems to be okay. We have um, we have a generation capacity of significantly more than the consumption level. So I think the satisfaction the low satisfaction level I believe is because I also came out here and I think I'm going the wrong way. Um, I also came out to my poles and I put down significantly more of these dishes to collect power. So I think that the reason I'm showing a low levels of satisfaction from on the Dyson Swarm is because there isn't enough power being generated to keep all of these happy. However, the amount of power that's being generated is enough to keep all to keep my entire base powered. So we, whilst, whilst we can't keep all of these ch powered up to the full, um, how many megawatts they're supposed to be running at, um, there is enough power available between them that the base is, is, is fine. So I, th yes, I think things are reasonably stable at the moment. Although the uh, there's, um, but there's still a few things, a few things to look at next time. I think the first thing I'm going to look at is going to be getting the circuit production and the processor production up up to a decent level again on on, on that on that other planet. Then I want to think about producing green science, which is going to mean uh, these these processors, which is that's why I'm making the making need more processors in order to make the uh, quantum processors. And also start making these gravitron lenses, which require um, diamonds, which are easy, and strange matter, which is hard. But with that, that that requires deuterium, which I, I have quite a lot of that actually. Uh, iron's fine, particle containers, fine-ish. So I'll I'll start building up a factory to create these somewhere, and then that'll that'll allow me to start getting the green science available, which will then allow me to start making the uh, the Dyson sphere properly. At which point I will then need to go off somewhere else and build out a massive array of those rocket launch silos and, and the production systems to feed them because at the moment what I've got is absolutely terrible and just not capable of keeping up. So that's something I'll be, I should be doing that on Wednesday. Please come along at uh, 7.30 UK time to uh, to watch the stream live and uh, see how I get on with all of all, all of my to-do list. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It'll tell you when everything's happening and when all of when when I'm going live, when when the videos come out, and all of that sort of stuff. And it helps helps me helps you recommend uh, my channel to everyone else on YouTube. So it'll tell a lot more people about the videos, and that'll help me help the channel grow. 
there's other stuff going on on the channel as well. The uh, Monday evening is the uh, regular Factorio uh, Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 multiplayer stream. That's going quite nicely at the moment. Um, and then uh, on Thursdays we have GTA videos coming out, which are very different from the other stuff on the channel. Um, they're a lot more action-packed, though, so they're very exciting. And I, I, I do recommend them, and I do, I do enjoy, enjoy playing that game and enjoy making the videos. Uh, there's a catch-up video to the weekend as well, of course, as you know, because you're watching one right now. Um, so I hope, you, hope you're enjoying them and uh, you're enjoying everything else on the channel as well. And I shall, uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. And actually, before I go, let's go and have a quick look at what seems to be growing in my Dyson, Dyson Sphere over over there at the moment, because that there is quite a lot of there's there's quite a lot of extra stuff appearing out there in space that wasn't there before. While I'm flying out here, also please check out the uh, the channel sponsor. That's Trefoil.be. They produce, um, they, they 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 run servers for various game host for hosting various games such as uh, Factorio and other similar sort of games. If you have, um, if you sign up with them using the code Lawrence Plays, you'll get your first month free. So I can definitely recommend that. And here we see here we see parts of the Dyson Sphere getting gradually built. So these are the these are the um, the pods where the rockets land in order to. Um, <laughs> Where the, where the rockets land in order to get the uh, the sphere built up, and I'm not sure exactly how it all works, but we'll find out more about this in the future. I've now run out of power, but thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.